what we're doing. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, it's uh, hurricane season again. We haven't had any yet, but uh, we likely will this time, as will be explained in just a moment. But uh, uh, the, the price of living in paradise, as we do, is that we have to have to uh, abide by what nature sends our way, and that's hurricanes, tornadoes, all kind of storms. But the good news is, and it's all good news, is that we are well prepared. The, the team that we have here is, has worked together over the years. We have the kinks worked out, and we know that the main goal is, uh, is to be sure that, the, that our people know the danger that they face and how to avoid that danger and protect their lives and, and property. So we have a, a, several presenters here, and anyone who has any questions, we urge you to ask it now. We know we have a lot of new people living in our state that never have experienced a hurricane. We've had a lot of them in the last few years, starting in 2015. And again, we're likely to have to see a very active season this time. So we want to talk about the roads. We want to talk about getting in and out of your homes, taking care of your animals, staying in touch with the, the authorized information sources and, and not uh, simply what you might hear on social media, which many times is wrong and uh, leads to problems and confusion. So, Department of, I mean, uh, Highway Patrol, Colonel Manley. Thank you, thank you, Governor. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Travis Manley uh, with the Highway Patrol and here on behalf of Director Woods, Director of the Department of Public Safety. Uh, each year we, we plan for uh, hurricane evacuation from our coast uh, around South Carolina. We know in past that Preparation is key, and but one of the biggest things is the communication to the public is what we plan to focus on here again this year. We want to ensure that the public knows in advance how to swiftly and safely move from the coast in the event we evacuate. I want to emphasize the, the level of planning that has gone into place each year to make sure this operation goes as planned. Uh, we began pre-planning in February, conducting planning meetings and also tabletop exercises. We moved through March and we conducted additional planning meetings with the regions all over the state on the coast. Uh, and we still utilize uh, tabletop exercises through the month of June to prepare for this season. Uh, in May, we participated in the governor's tabletop exercise and conducted preseason uh, hurricane evacuation route reconnaissance where we checked for signage along with our counterparts with SCDOT. Uh, during the exercise, uh, we're going to have a full-scale exercise that we have each year. It's going to be on June the 9th this year, It'll be a full-scale exercise. And during that exercise, we'll test the I-26 reversal in the central regions, which is uh, Charleston, Orangeburg, and Columbia. We'll also test the US-501 and SC-544 reversals here in the northern region, and then US-21 and US-278 in the southern region. So our goal in this event and this exercise uh, for an evacuation is to ensure that the most efficient distribution of traffic is put on the 35, once again I say there's 35 evacuation routes around the state. So motorists should know their zone before the threat of a hurricane. They should be familiar with their routes and they can do this uh, once uh, Director Stenson will also say through hurricane.sc. Also it's a vital resource to the uh, SEEMD website where you can also click on the link to see the hurricane traffic management link, which will provide additional information on uh, evacuation routes. I can't emphasize enough that prepare now, know your zone, and remember your route. Thank you, Governor. Thanks, sir. Ms. Perry, Department of Transportation. Thank you, Governor. Thank you for having me here today. I'm Rob Perry with the SCDOT. On behalf of Secretary Hall and the Department of Transportation, as the Governor said and Colonel Manley said, we're prepared. We don't just start preparing in June. We start preparing, as the Colonel said, in February of every year. We've ridden all 35 routes and confirmed all are in good shape and have the proper signing to alert our motorists and our visitors of how to get safely inland. The goal of the hurricane plan is to move people from the coast 100 miles inland. Pretty simple, right? Um, the big thing that we stress is listen to what is put out by the emergency management divisions, by EMD, um, about what, what to do by the governor's office. Know your route. Um, it's just too late. If you're doing it once the governor calls for evacuation, you've not prepared. Um, failure to plan is planning to fail. That's what we like to say. So 
I encourage you to download the 511 app or go to the 511 website. Um, you can turn on all 35 hurricane evacuation routes. And the good thing about the app is if you're at your, your home at the beach or if you're at your rental for, the, for your vacation, you can just hit the triangulate and it'll tell you exactly where you are and you can identify the closest route to where you're, you're staying, where you live, uh, to have the most efficient and effective evacuation inland. Um, so with that I'll be followed with uh, Director Kim Stinson. Yeah, Kim Stinson from, uh, from State EMD. Uh, I think everybody in the room probably knows that we're probably most likely to have some kind of hurricane activity in South Carolina this year. Doesn't mean we'll have a direct landfall, but uh, it's likely that somebody, some, some one of those storms is gonna come past, uh, past us fairly close at least. Uh, there's one out there probably now, I don't know if it's been a named storm yet, but uh, down heading towards the Florida direction as we speak. Uh, we'd like to emphasize though, that the entire state and not just the coastal areas are affected uh, by a hurricane. Uh, we can have hurricane force winds all the way up uh, into uh, the uh, York County and North Carolina border area. But what we've also seen in the last several years is that there's been a significant amount of flooding. And that's uh, pretty much any time that we can have floods here in South Carolina, but specifically and uh, more importantly for this conversation is certainly during a, during a, uh, uh, a hurricane uh, event. So uh, it's Basically, everybody needs to take heed of the of flooding problems, uh, again, regardless of whether you're on the coast or not. Uh, for this year's hurricane season, it's all already been mentioned, uh, but we want everybody, we encourage everybody to remember three items. One is know your zone, uh, prepare your home, and remember your route. And we've talked a little bit about that in terms of that, but you know, certainly all three of those are important. Uh, in preparation for, uh, for this year's uh, hurricane season, which is already uh, ongoing. Uh, and lastly, we encourage everybody to be their own emergency manager, and we've got a number of tools to help citizens and businesses prepare for that. Some have already been mentioned already, but we have our website at seemd.org, an additional uh, dedicated hurricane website, that's hurricane.sc. Uh, and then uh, we also have our hurricane guide, uh, which uh, we publish every year and it's got good updated information on it. Uh, that uh, information is available on our website uh, and also on hurricane.sc and it'll be published in newspapers later this month. And then uh, lastly, the South Carolina Emergency Manager app uh, that allows you to make your own plan, keep uh, important information uh, with you at all times and uh, stay connected with uh, with not only uh, the news media and uh, government news outlets, but also with your, uh, with your family and friends as well. So uh, again, we encourage everybody to, uh, to use those tools. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Stinson. <clears throat> well, as y'all can see all the, those, uh, we have a great team here, Team South Carolina. We've been through this before and we, we feel that we're very well prepared and very well experienced. But the important thing is, is, is what this, how the, the citizens are, are they well prepared? Because we know that some are not experienced at all with hurricanes because they just came to our beautiful state. And I promise you, if, uh, if one is upon you, it'll be a, a memorable experience because it's, it's unlike anything you've probably ever seen before. So with that, we're delighted to open up for questions. If anyone has one from anyone, including the news. So you guys said you start preparing in February, but obviously the National Weather Service and those people kind of put out their um, particular plan, or how many storms they're going to see in like May. Do those plan preparations kind of change uh, once you all kind of see how many storms they're kind of predicting? No, the, the simple answer to that is no, it doesn't change. Uh, we have to be prepared uh, whatever the, uh, uh, the Weather Service tells us. We, we just have to do that. And we've had plenty of experience here in the last years in terms of uh, having that happen to us here. But no, it will not change our plans. If you get one, one hurricane that hits South Carolina, you have to be prepared. So, you know, it's kind of, a lot of people in the immersion management business, uh, you know, it's always interesting to see what those predictions are. But in terms of changing our operational posture or what we do, it really doesn't change. We still have to prepare for uh, the eventuality of the hurricane. Governor, is there any um, concern with mounting gas prices that that might uh, dissuade people from 
fueling up and taking these evacuation zones. Um, and can you talk about probably scavenging laws and things like that? that are well, we do have if we have if we're in a state of emergency, the uh, we can uh, uh, activate our price price gouging law, which is a, a criminal has criminal penalties. But I, I would suggest if just to, as everyone has said, keep it keep keep your eyes and ears open, listen to the news, listen for the alerts, and yes, you do not want to go out and get ready to leave in the middle of the night with the wind blowing and be out of gas. So uh, be careful. More questions? How much has changed since, obviously, Florence, as you guys saw, it wasn't necessarily the storm that was bad, it was the flooding afterwards for two weeks. Uh, I know you guys have been trying to update those flood maps. How much of your plan has changed just in the last two to three years? Uh, good question. Uh, one of the things that we decided uh, uh, after Florence is that we needed a better state level response plan for floods. And so we have, go right now, we've developed the base plan for that. And what we're working on right now is uh, uh, looking at the uh, different uh, basins in South Carolina, flood basins uh, or river basins, uh, starting with a PD area uh, and kind of concentrating and and looking at you know what evacuation zones might look like, what the sheltering might look like, what are the what's the critical infrastructure in those particular areas that we might have to uh, to do to do something with, and, and sort of that thing. So, bottom line is we recognize that uh, we're working on it, and quite frankly, we're not done yet. Uh, but uh, that's the goal. I guess along those lines, um, since Florence, has there been any dredging or remediation work done? You know, particularly to the Wakaba or the PD. These really high flood areas? I am not qualified to okay, answer that question. Not. <laughs> Thought I would ask, but fair enough. <laughs> In terms of traffic, um, I say the Highway 501 is going to be kind of a part of that a reversal a couple, and ne next week, I guess, say Thursday. Um, with CC event happening next week, how will that kind of play into effect with that incoming traffic? Um, or will it play in any effect at all with those visitors coming in? It, it shouldn't play any effect. Uh, we just ask that uh, we, we won't be blocking any roadways. Will it be a simulation of uh, staging assets and resources on the shoulders of the road so there won't be any actual roadways that are blocked and we just ask that the public just pay attention to the first responders and, and, and DOT personnel out there during these exercises. Are there going to be tech upgrades to communication towers? Obviously a lot of people are going to be on their phones in an emergency situation and, and you need to be able to communicate in real time. I'm just wondering any concerns over bandwidth or access like that in outlying areas? Can't answer that for the uh, cell phones, but I can answer for the 800 system that, uh, yes, we do test communications uh, quite often for first responders, and also there's also emergency networks for first responders as well. More questions? One thing I don't believe we mentioned is when the power goes off at your home and you have one of those uh, generators, be sure it's out in the yard and not in the room with you. We, we have uh, had tragedies happen all over the country with those kind of